In the previous screencast, we saw how to create a single function in Zig, uh, Zig add, and call that from C. In this one, we're going to show you how to translate this entire file, shell.c, into Zig. Um, it won't necessarily be idiomatic Zig, but it will be done for you by the Zig compiler itself. Um, and then you can edit it and uh, clean it up. So uh, we're going to use the translate C function. So naively, you might just try to do Zig translate C, uh, and it's in modules slash shell slash shell.c. All right, so if we just run that, and it couldn't find NRFXUR, and that makes sense because the compiler has no idea what our, the, the Zig translate C has no idea what our search path is or any defines. So we're going to come back to this, which we created in the first video. This is just the output from verbose make. And so we have to pass all of these arguments into translate C. So we have some capital D defines, some capital I include paths. Let's grab all of those. All right, so um, and it uses the same arguments as the C compiler, which is nice. So we have zig translate C, all of this stuff from the C compiler. Um, we're going to set the target so that uh, it gets some built-ins correctly defined. Uh, in this case, it is thumb freestanding new EABI HF. Um, we're also going to need to set some C flags. Um, an important one here is short enums that tells it to use the smallest possible size to store an enum instead of an int. Um, so generally that'll be an uh, unsigned char or a signed char, depending on the range of values. Um, we do that with dash C flags, and we're going to use the same C flag that we have here, dash dash, to say that the C flags are done, and we're going to give it the path to the file. So modules shell shell.c. All right, so that's a bunch of arguments. Let's see how that works. And string.h not found. Okay, so that is a uh, system header. And again, we need to make sure translate C is using the path to the cross compiler header and not to our host header for string.h. Um, luckily, there's a magic incantation we can use to get that. Um, this right here. Um, and so we're going to grab this path, these, these three paths right here, and we're going to put those in at the top. Um, and we need dash i for each one. We'll need some backslashes to make it all count as one line. All right, so let's try that again. And this might take a little while because it has to translate tens of thousands of lines of code as the parse it, translate it into zig, and uh, write it out. So, But luckily, once we've done this, it's cached. So as long as none of the files change, any future calls will be fast. All right, so it actually worked. So let's, um, we need to redirect that. So we're just going to drop the output into uh, our existing main.zig. So let's try one more time. And uh, like I said, it's cached this time, so we don't have to sit and wait. There we go. So let's look at our main.zig. And all right, so previously this just had the zig add function. Now it's got a whole bunch of stuff. And speaking of zig add, that was defined in this file and we just overwrote it. So um, let's put that definition back in. Uh, A plus B. Okay, I'll save that, and um, we want to make sure that we actually flash it with new code. That uh, so, what we're going to do is we're just going to add one more here. Um, and if you recall, we're adding 40 and 2. So this time, instead of getting 42 for the sum, we should get 43. So let's see what happens. Um, go back to my build directory. I'll make compiling the zig. Oh. Oh, a um, couple of problems there. Um, zig add. Forgot to return the value, so that would be helpful. 
And we also want to just delete our old shell.c so that we don't get conflicting definitions. So let's try that again. There we go. All right. Now we want to flash with that. So let's do that. Okay. And we're going to reset it. And we'll come over here to our UART. And all right. So the moment of truth, let's press S. 43, so we're actually running the zig code that we just compiled, and we didn't really have to do anything except give the correct arguments to translate C. So the next step will be manually converting some of these functions one at a time into more idiomatic zig um, as necessary. You can leave them like this, but um, you know we have this special uh, star C pointer, which is used uh, for translated C code because um, C only has a concept of pointers. It doesn't have Zig's concept of uh, one or many pointers. So this is a, a special type that can be used as either, but this would be a first thing that we might want to fix. And we'll talk about that in the next screencast.